apologies about that. I did get it working, but then it stopped the other camera working. So you wouldn't have been able to see what I was painting. You'd have just been able to see me painting. Uh, where was I? Yeah, oh, and some garlic. It's a cave out of the way, of course. Good. Is it out of focus now? No, no I guess that's okay. Okay, probably fussing. I'm going to draw this in blue. is working terribly. Uh, oh, don't turn upside down. Lots of lumps. Right, I'm gonna have lots of lumps in my painting today. Oh, I've got someone with me at least. I wonder who it is. Shadows are going to be important here. Uh, I've got this kind of shape. Actually, no, I'll make that a bit bigger. 
this kind of shape overall. That's where that shadow goes. That's where the garlic is. It's a negative space. A little too big. Let's shrink it down, bring a bit of brown in. Redraw that. Say okay. That's the kind of space I want. That's the opening at the top of the jar. If that goes there. And oh, this is still here. That's good. And the garlic will go about there. You know what? I might chuck a whole load of dark on here for now. Just so I can pull the light out of it. We'll make it bluer again. So, okay. All of this is in shadow. All of this shape here. Okay. Pull some light out of there. Shelf, so I can't remember how it was sized. I'm thinking from how it's behaving that this is a uh, the Michael Harding non-absorbent primer. It's behaving an awful lot like it. It's good. Good to know what you're using. Because this stuff isn't absorbent, it means the paint will sit up on the surface, but it also means that this sort of staining layer will take an awful lot longer to evaporate. So I'll 
I'm just going to go there. The shadow here, and that shadow goes across. And those are those shapes. There are some perceived edges in here, which are ones that I can't really see, but I know they're there. So I've deduced it. Uh, so I'm going to try not to be too distracted by them, do something which is a bit more impressionist, a bit more just about what. What the light's doing. Now the advantage of this surface, so you know, but the paint doesn't stain as much, so I can wipe it away here. marks are going to become in any way even semi-permanent. That can do that. Okay, that spirit's going to evaporate. And uh some background colour paints. Hmm. Most of this paint is old and from a previous painting. And it started to form a skin. But only just, so I can still use most of it. I'm gonna put that red down there. Scrape up the rest. That's a big old mess that is. So I'm about six months into this live streaming experiment now, and um, that seems like a good time to step things up. So there's a few things I'm going to have to do to make these cameras work all the time, and you know, um, it's just going to mean spending a bit of money, unfortunately. But there you go, that's life. Um, not that I really have any, but hopefully I can do a bit to monetize this overall project. I'll keep doing my um, live streams for free every Monday. That won't change. Uh, and that's sort of part of the experimentation with sharing the process and um, yeah, what, uh, I suppose, you know, uh, we're welcoming you into the studio from a distance. Um, but there are a lot of other things I do uh, like it. Uh, occasional exhibiting of paintings um, and occasional uh, projects and bits and pieces and teaching. Um, now with everything that's going on it looks like the teaching won't be happening for the summer term so I'm going to try and build on what I've learned from doing this and do online lessons. So I'll be doing stuff um, that you can uh, participate in. 
<laughs> and um, I'm going to find various ways of uh, of doing that. I, I want it to be so that any, almost anybody can watch it. Oh yeah, hopefully I'll do it. Anybody will be able to watch it. For those that want to participate more and be working along and uh, have a critique of what they're doing, so they can send me pictures of you know of their stuff as it's going, or even Skype in, and uh, and we can um, yeah we can sort of do a bit of distance teaching. So um, you know, correcting and critiquing and having a look at what the process is. And um, and also, you know, learning things about how to uh, how to make the kind of paintings you want to make, and give yourself the freedom to create stuff and have fun with it. That's mainly what I try and concentrate on with the teaching. Um, I know some people might think if uh, if they have been to my lessons <laughs> that maybe it's a little bit boot camp sometimes, but really that's just all down to what. The uh, people, you know, the, the um, attendees demand. People come along and they want to sort of pick every bit of information. They want to really get stuck into painting, and uh, which is re very rewarding for me. I enjoy that very much. Uh, and so I, you know, I will join in with that and push people as hard as I think they can. Uh, they can handle, and. Um, Often that's pretty hard. Uh, it's amazing how much uh, we have in in uh, potential with things like doing art. I think partly because so much of life we're dealing with the world in a very sort of logical and practical way, as is necessary, and. The abstract relationships of things in the world and in our experience kind of get put to one side in favour of a more linear and logical and sort of language based, sort of token based system of thinking. Um, but actually, you know, because we all have this as part of our experience as well. When you really get to concentrate on it, it can be quite amazing how much of that way of thinking you have ready to tap into. Um, this is completely the wrong colour. What is it? Mm -hmm. Put someone here where it doesn't matter. Need a redder one and an orange one. Yeah, um, so once you get stuck into painting, it's amazing how how much untapped talent everybody's carrying around with them. Um, if you can get to the stage where you're not being self-critical or putting yourself down and just enjoying painting and making something, then uh, it can really, really open the floodgates That's incredibly intense. That's, a, that's way too much, so I'm going to put a bit of brown in that. A little bit of that blue as well. Still, that is a lot more like it, I think. For the shadow colour, I'll go with that. This, I think I need to remix this and make it more orange and a bit of yellow ochre. A bit of lemon yellow in there and chuck a bit more red in. How's that looking? Closer, I think. How's that? Yeah. It's going to have to be so much redder than that. I don't want to overdo it with the red. I'm using alizarin crimson here, which is a very sort of what you might call bluish. Uh, a lot of the time, what we think of as red is actually like that, you know, 
litter box red or fire engine red or whatever you want to call it which is actually a very orangey colour there's a very high yellow content in it Don't you know that that's going to do I'm going to even put start putting oil in this right at the beginning because I'm having to work out a primer here and we'll be uh Keeping this pretty much as one or two layers of paint at most. Let's give a bit of oil into that, actually, it'll mix it with a palette knife. Let's make that flow a bit more. This does. Yeah, now I'm really going to try and concentrate on these abstract shapes. comfortable with that. This yeah, there's a bit more up there. And then it goes across. Yeah, that's the top of that shadow. Really, just a one color ground I'm putting on here. I'm being fairly careless about where the edges are. I'm trying to get all the drawing perfect right at the beginning. I'm kind of practicing the strokes in my mind first, so I'm trying to sort of experience those abstract shapes and directions. Um, sometimes you'll see me drawing things in the air before I start, but this is not one of those times. That's there, that's there. This more orange as it gets nearer to the front. So this stuff here is kind of going to be left like this, I guess, pretty much. I'm using too long a brush for these bits as well. Really, but I'm putting my hand directly in front of the camera too. Oh well, no, it's not too bad. Maybe I've got a slightly stiffer brush I can use. Yeah, just for spreading this out.
tell myself I wouldn't get too fussy about. <laughs> Okay, shadows. Well, while I've got this on the brush, how's that? Um, no, brown and that's much more like it. Okay, I'll put a few darker bits into there now, which go here. Submix on one side of that. Okay. Um, while I've got that, I think I've got some shadow across here. No, that's not. That's not dark enough. too fussy about it. Um, let's get a basic ground colour in. I'm going to leave this brush as it is. 
because I might want to return to that. Life I will clean. Ooh, up to two. Welcome both. Okay, we get some white. Let's pop that down here. There's a sort of a bluey green colour, so I'll mix the local colour. It's kind of there in both the white of the pottery and also in the pattern. Sorry about that. Okay, that's my blue. I quite like that. It's another fun. Is a bit too much of it over here no, to one side. Let's just get the white. Now. Let's mix this up. I put a little bit of raw over in there too, just to soften it down. And I think that's pretty close to the colour I want. There's a creamier colour that will come in afterwards, but this will do for starters. So this I'm not going to thin. Oh, it turns out I am because there's some thinners still on the brush, but this I wasn't intending to thin. It's not so a shape. This is going to blend in. It gets a lot brighter and yellower around there. Across here. This will be some light. And it's all creamier down there. It's going to be straight into the shadows now. So here, yeah. It's going to be a lot darker. It's going to get even darker than that, in fact. The underneath it's going to go redder too. But I'll come back to that. I don't need that yet. Okay. There's this bluish shade for the shadow, which will definitely be in there. So it's still too green, isn't it? Or is it? A bit more white in there. So I'm making tiny adjustments as I go along. Yeah, that's lighter. And it's even lighter. It's just as it goes in. Um, there we go. Something like that. soft edge there as well. And just sort of work it to and fro. Ah, no. Not get too caught up in small details. And I do want the direction. Okay. So we've got a bit of that light over here, but not too much. No, it's definitely darker than that. What am I talking about? Much bluer, which does kind of fit with this bit in the middle. Place that there. Okay, we get browner. Now for that other shadow on this side, which is a bit more like that, I think. Needs to be even darker than that. This is quite counterintuitive. Even browner. There we are. That's more like it. That's about all the contrast I can see. Yeah.
my eyes can't see it. Won't work for the garlic. Weirdly, I think it will. so much anywhere else I can see it talking colours now. Okay, it's gone quite grey. It needs a bit of orangey red to bring it back. Push it around there. doing it's kind of a, it's kind of more like it no oh, what's that ugly make nice marks that's a nice mark so I paid a slightly creamy version and that will go just here I'm going to leave it there. I'm not going to fiddle with it. <laughs> he says. Okay, where else can we see that? We can see a bit in here. And that'll do. Okay. to cream the version over here. Let's see how well that works. Much better. Should be some more over here. Picked up all sorts of junk. This little journey around the palette. We'll start at the right, which is around here. Work it out to that edge there. That's where it gets creamy. And there, that edge might be too high, but I still have the background colour so I can correct it as I go along if necessary. Where else can I see that creamy colour? Is that it there? Yeah, that is it really. Okay. Put this on here. It's sort of a placeholder as much as anything, but it does fill in the background. There's a lighter colour to go on this garlic at a later time. There's that light round there. Goes all the way down here. It travels across there too. This is where it mixes in with the background colour, which is also in there. Oh, that's 
meant to be brown and it is. Lovely. Hong Kong. I don't want to do too much first layer painting because actually Other marks to go over the top. Hmm. Okay, I've still got the pattern to do as well. So I guess I'll put that on now. And that's a tricky one because there's a dark and a light version of it. On the inside here, I look right down the middle. There is a, a row right down the middle. First one's there, then there's this, then there's this. I go all the way around. One, two, three. Okay, so I'm going to mix a slightly darker blue for that shadow version. Partly it's going to mix on the surface as well. Right. Still figuring out the best way to do this, so I'm not entirely sure. Maybe that's it. Same kind of thing, what's the angle on that one, for example? It's about this, and about that one, it's a bit straighter. How fiddly am I prepared to get? Fiddly, I think. Yeah. So that's still in shadow there. Steeper and steeper.
Christ. Um, actually not. That's much more like it. Okay, I need another brush. Oh, I'm entirely red to keep this bowl shape working. Actually, this is also where the bright lights come in, so this would be a good place to do it. Okay, I'll make a lighter version now, do some of these paler bits over here. That looks the same. Okay. I don't know if this was a good idea. <laughs> okay, I'm sticking with the light for this here. today. I must be distracted by something. I do hope everyone's all right. Okay, this is starting to make some sense to my eyes now, which is the main part of the battle really.
Okay. Great. I'm going to borrow a little bit of that. Mix it in with the red. Put it in that shadow. Oh, that's, is that too much? No, maybe that's okay. Shadow on the garlic. Should have gone the other way. It's not too late to do so. Great. On the red side, put that heavy shadow in there. There's definitely sort of orangey colour I want to bring out in places. Be very careful not to lighten it too much. But it's in here. It's in here. Where else can I see it? And I've already got it in there. Alright. Time for some dark orange. Okay, started with the red, that was stupid. Okay. Make a shadow version. Should work pretty well, or is it too dark? Needs to be redder. Okay, same here. Solid red, that'll be a bit there. I just need the lighter version, which will be this. With some pink in it. Let's see how much we can get away with this. Oh, yeah, lovely. I could do with some oil in it too. Really make it flow. I'll push that across there. Around that edge. I'm not worrying about making it too perfect because I've still got that red to bring it back in with. Get this red on this brush here. I can get this to behave itself now. A lot of weight actually. Side of this vase. Bowl. Big vase or milder. It's clearly a bowl. Okay, I'm going to need some extra bright pink as we're going in there. Where else? Along that edge. And more of this. A little bit along the top. Okay. Be 
Haha. <laughs> okay, that's starting to work. I'm going to get some of that light. I was talking about getting some orange in this earlier. Let me put some of it in there. A whole lot of orange needs to get in here. Just make it sit up at the front. And in there. This bring, brings it into the foreground a bit more now. Some highlights to come to, which I'll probably do with this. It needs to be yellower. Marks ugly, break into those ones a bit. Okay, well, I can get into the bright highlights now. She's going to involve white, but not very, very bright white because I've still got these little highlights to go. So I need to make a blue version of that. Make it a little bit creamy. So it's going to need some red as well. I think this, with a dab of oil, should just sit up. Hi Matt. some of this light back on it. There's still a long way to go before we get to the bright white, which I'll put on at the end. We'll keep going. Strengthen it on here a little bit as well. Not too much then, don't want to overdo it. Enough to the air, it needs to try and put this a little bit just to get a sense of where the light's falling. There's a bit of reflected light on the other side. Oh, god, that's awful! This is really ugly. to a point. Mixing in a bit with this level too. Bit of reflected light. It's also coming off the bottom. Oh maybe that maybe that help. That bring some of this shadow colour back in. Just where it's darkest as well. Do a bit of reshaping. a 
who's really fiddling with this. Mm. What was that? Oh yeah, highlights. Feel like that. Warmer glow to some of this. Pretty thin like too. Yeah, creamy color. Maybe a little damp to it, which is too warm. Not sure this is any good, but we'll see. I'm going to lighten this even more now. The highlights on the garlic, which will go there and here, and on the little stem stalky thing. Okay. Ah, yeah, I was wondering this one more thing that's going to happen. So a little reflection just at the bottom there. No, you see that flat blade edge to the brush. Put that little flick of light in there. And I think that pretty much finishes it. I know there is, there's a little brush right here. Okay, how's that? Garlic and bowl. Oh my god, that's dull. Well, you never know until you have a go, do you? <laughs> oh god, how awful. Oh well, I wasn't really sure. I'm sometimes when you start something and you really don't know if it's going to be any good, it turns out quite well. But this, uh, this is just disastrous. Look at it. I mean, I could probably have made a more dull painting if I'd really tried, but for the life of me, I can't think how. Uh, there we go. <laughs> What a yawn fest. Uh, well, I really sold the idea of doing online classes now, didn't I? I mean, that's... And the, the bizarre thing is, I really can't find any of it that's that badly painted. It's just incredibly dull. Into this blue. That's a bit better. Maybe I just need to keep dabbing at it until it becomes more interesting. Um, it needs to be creamier. Let's 
pense. Need it. Bit of light in there, that's way too much. Use the right colour for the wrong tone. Perhaps I should have got the tiny brush out and tried to do all those patterns. Signature. Why, why not? Eh? At least to admit my own errors, if nothing else. I hope that's in some way interesting. And um, <laughs> maybe I'll try and find something genuinely interesting to do next week. Um, so yeah, thanks for coming, both of you. <laughs> and uh, maybe I'll spend a week trying to get that third camera working again. And. Um, getting a new power supply for the desk, which doesn't buzz quite as loudly. And uh, yeah, I'll, um, I'll catch you all soon. Good night.